Hello everyone. Welcome back to our CA final law revision series. I hope you have seen the first two lectures of our revision series. If not, I've provided the link in the description below. Also, if you like my videos, do like and share the videos and subscribe to this channel for more updates. Also, leave a comment in the comment box below to let us know your views. Today, we shall revise chapter 13 of Companies Act relating to appointment and remuneration of managerial personnel section 196 to section 205 we shall divide the chapter for the revision purpose we shall revise sections related to appointment sections related to remuneration section related to compensation and section related to others we'll also revise schedule 5 now first we'll see what is a key managerial personnel section 2 subsection 51 defines key managerial personnel a key managerial person is a ceo or a managing director or a manager a company secretary a whole time director a cfo a other officer one level below directors who is in whole time employment now what is the difference between managing director and a manager manager and managing director section 2 subsection 53 contains the provisions related to manager and section 2 subsection 54 related to managing director now a manager may or may not be a director but a managing director means a director manager can be only of a one company but a managing director can be managing director in multiple companies now amongst manager or managing director anyone can be appointed at the at one time that is they both cannot be appointed at the same time that is a company cannot have a manager as well as a managing director at the same time now this board that is manager and managing director are entrusted with a substantial power of management but it excludes the powers related to administrative acts of routine nature now the fourth section will revise section 196 appointment of managing director whole time director or manager now first we have seen that managing director and a manager cannot be appointed at the same time second the tenure of the managing director whole time director and manager is not exceeding five years at a time that is no company can appoint or reappoint any person for a term exceeding five years at a time and reappointment cannot be done earlier than one year before the expiry of his term now what are the disqualifications of a managing director whole time director and manager now this disqualification given in section 196 are in addition to the disqualification stated under section 164 that is these are additional disqualification for managing director whole time director and manager now what are this disqualification first he shall not be below the age of 21 years or has appointed Seven, how has attained 70 years however he can be of age more of 70 years or more the conditions will be passing of special resolution and second indicating a justification in the explanatory statement now passing a special resolution shall not be mandatory in case if the vote cast in favor of the motion exceeds the votes cast against if any also and the board of directors have made an application to central government and central government is satisfied that the appointment of a person who has attained 70 years or more is more beneficial to the company the second disqualification shall be undischarged or adjudged as insolvent third suspended payment to his creditors or makes or has made composition with them the next is convicted by the court of offense and sentenced to imprisonment exceeding six months 
Now, E is Schedule Five, Part One states the additional condition to be eligible for appointment without the approval of central government. The additional conditions are not been sentenced to imprisonment for any period or to the fine exceeding rupees one thousand for conviction of an offence under this Act or under sixteen Acts. specified labor law is excluded under this act specified next is he has not been detained for any period under the conservation of foreign exchange and prevention of smuggling activities act 1974 now in this condition 1 and condition 2 if central government provide for the approval to the appointment then no further approval of central government is necessary for the subsequent appointment if this person has not been convicted or detained or uh, subsequent to the approval the next additional condition mentioned in schedule 5 part 1 is managerial personnel in more than one company he draws remuneration subject to the ceiling provided in the section 5 of part 2 next is he is resident of india this condition is not applicable to the company in a scz as notified by the department of commerce now who is a resident of india it includes a person who has been staying in india for a continuous period of not less than 12 months immediately preceding the date of his appointment as a managerial personnel and who has come to stay in india for taking up employment in india uh, or for carrying a business or vocation in india now provided that non resident in india shall enter india only after obtaining a proper employment visa from the concerned indian mission abroad now we have seen the disqualification now we'll we'll see the procedure for appointment the appointment shall be approved by board of directors at board meeting by shareholders by passing a resolution and central government if the appointment is at a variance to the conditions specified in schedule 5 now what are the validities of act if the appointment is not approved by the company in general meeting any act done by him before such approval before such approval shall be deemed to be valid now this disqualification tenure condition and procedure for appointment condition is not applicable to government company and the procedure for appointment and validity act sections not applicable to private company now the next section we shall look into is section 203 appointment of key managerial personnel now a whole time key managerial personnel who is a whole time key managerial personnel he is a md or ceo or a manager and in their absence a whole time director a company secretary or and a cfo now who shall appoint a whole time key managerial personnel is stated in rule 8 it is every listed company and every other public company having a paid up share capital of 10 crores or more shall appoint a key managerial personnel then other than this company a company having paid up share capital of 5 crores or more shall appoint a whole time company secretary now the proviso to section 203 states that an individual not to be appointed or reappointed as a chairperson as well as a md or ceo at the same time unless articles provides otherwise and b company does not carry multiple businesses but this prohibition of appointing chairperson as well as md at the same time is not applicable to certain class of companies now which are these class of companies they are public company having having paid up share capital rupees 100 crores or more or annual turnover of rupees 1000 crores or more engaged in multiple business and has appointed one or more ceo for each such businesses now a whole time key managerial personnel 
we'll see the conditions for appointment the first is it shall be appointed by the resolution of board and the next is shall not hold office in more than one company at the same time except subsidiary company now the proviso provides that a key managerial personnel can be a director in any company with the permission of the board now the next is if the company wants to appoint a person as a managing director if he is a managing director of manager of one company and not more than company then the condition shall be that it shall be approved by the resolution passed at the board meeting with the consent of all the directors that is unanimous resolution and second a specific notice of meeting and the resolution to be moved shall be given to all the directors then in india the a uh, condition states that a person cannot be manager in second company now in case of casual vacancy then it shall be filled up by the board at the board meeting within a period of 6 months from the date of vacancy now next we'll see sections related to remuneration section 197 is overall maximum managerial remuneration and managerial remuneration in case of absence of inadequacy of profit this section is applicable only to public company it is not applicable to government company and private company in section 197 subsection 1 states the uh, provisions related to overall maximum managerial remuneration now it says the overall limit to maximum remuneration payable to all directors including managing director whole time director and manager is 11% of net profit of the company now if there is a managing director or whole time director or manager if there is one managing director whole time director or manager then the limit shall be 5% of net profit and if there is more than one then it shall be 10% of net profit if there is a director who is neither managing director or whole time director that is other directors then the limit shall be 1% of net profit and there is no such other directors then it shall be 3% of net profit if the company want to exceed the limit of this percentage then in case of overall limit the company has to pass a special resolution in general meeting subject to schedule 5 and no central government approval is required and in other this other cases a special resolution shall suffice now this percentage are exclusive of any fees payable to the director in case of any default in the payment before paying such remuneration exceeding the limits prior approval of banks financial institution non convertible debentures holders and secured creditors shall be required in section 197 subsection 3 and subsection 11 rule contains the provisions related to no profit or inadequate profit now the remuneration in case of no profit or inadequate profit the remuneration shall be as per schedule 5 and the sitting fees shall be maximum rupees 1 lakh it is stated in rule 4 now section 2 of part 2 of schedule 5 states that remuneration payable by the companies having no profit or inadequate profit without central government approval shall not exceed the limits under a and b now what is a a states that where the effective capital is rupee uh, negative or less than 5 crores then the limit of yearly remuneration payable shall not exceed rupees 60 lakh in case of 5 crores and above but less than 100 crores the limit shall not exceed 84 lakh in case of 100 crores and above but less than 250 crores the limit shall not exceed 120 lakhs and in case of 250 crores and above the limit shall not exceed 120 lakhs plus 0.01 percentage of the effective capital in excess of rupees 
250 crores this limits can be doubled after passing a special resolution and obtaining approval of banks financial institution non convertible debenture holders and secured creditors now what is the b condition it is if a managerial personnel is appointed in professional capacity then no approval of central government if the managing personnel not ha- does not have any interest in the capital of company subsidiary company holding company directly or indirectly or in the statutory structure and second is not having any direct or indirect interest or related to directors or promoters of company subsidiary company and holding company at any time during the last two years before or on or after the date of appointment the third condition is possess graduated level qualification with expertise and specialized knowledge in the field in which the company operates provided that the employee of a company holding share of the company not exceeding 0.5% of its paid up share capital under any scheme including esop for the allotment of shares or by way of qualification shall be deemed to be person not having any interest in the capital now this limits of a and b shall apply by the approval of nrc under section 178 or board or by the approval of a uh, bank financial institution non convertible debenture holders and secure creditors in case of default and by approval in general meeting ordinary resolution or special resolution now how shall be the remuneration be determined it shall be inclusive of remuneration payable to the director for the services rendered by him in any other capacity except professional nature to director possesses the requisite qualification for the practice of profession now what shall be the disclosures made by the listed company in the board report they are ratio of remuneration of each director to the median employee's remuneration and other details as specified under rule 5 it states that statement in a board report stating the names of top 10 employees in terms of remuneration drawn and name of every employee who is employed throughout the year and is in receipt of remuneration not less than rupees 1 crore and 20 lakhs then b is employed for the part of the year and is in receipt of remuneration not less than 8 lakh 50000 per month and third is employed throughout the year or for the part of year and is receipt on excess of that drawn by managing director whole time director manager and holds by himself or spouse or dependent children not less than 2% of equity shares of the company in case of insurance for indemnification of loss that is insurance is taken by the company on behalf of kmp for indemnifying against any liability in respect of any negligence default misfeasance breach of duty breach of ter- trust and is proved to be guilty then this premium shall form part of the remuneration and if he is not proved to be guilty then it shall not be a uh, part of the premium okay part of the remuneration now if a holding company or a subsidiary company gives a remuneration or commission to the director of the company then this shall be subject to the disclosure in the board report now as per the mca notification one section 197 sub section 1 shall apply with the modification in case if the remuneration of the director this director shall not be managing director full time director or manager for performing special services specified in articles to the needies on the monthly basis then it shall be subject to the approval of general meeting 
and next is subject to the provisions of section 197 now this approval shall not be needed in case if the needy company does not have managing director full time director or manager and the remuneration payable during the financial year to all the directors does not exceed 10% of net profit or rupees 15 lakh whichever is less and the remuneration payable under 2 is approved by a special resolution now some points to note in this section are guarantee commission is not payable sorry is not a part of remuneration the next is compensation paid to and letter fraud has taken place then the compensation shall not be refunded by the director and the director is not bound to disclose any breach of his fiduciary relation obligation now we shall look into section 199 recovery of managerial remuneration in certain cases now in case if the financial statements of the company are restated due to fraud or non compliance then the company shall recover from any past or present managing director full time director or manager or ceo by whatever name called during the period for which the financial statements are required to be restated has received the remuneration including stock options in excess of what would have been payable to him as per the restatement the next section is section 198 calculation of profits now according to section 198 net profit for the purpose of managerial remuneration payable under section 197 shall be calculated in accordance with the section 198 now credit shall be given to bounties and subsidies received from any government next credit shall not be given that is if credited to the pnl for arriving at profit before tax to the profits by way of premium on shares or debentures then profits on sale of forfeited shares then profits of capital nature then profits from sale of immovable property or fixed asset uh, and any change in the carrying amount of asset or liability then this specified sums amounts shall be deducted that is usual working charges director's remuneration bonus or commission paid then any tax in nature of tax on excess or abnormal profits then taxes on business profit impo imposed for special reason then interest on debentures interest on mortgages then interest on unsecured loans expenses on repair repairs outgoings uh, inclusive of contributions made under section 181 then depreciation to the extent specified in section 123 then the excess of expenditure over income so next is compensation uh, in virtue of any legal liability then insurance against the risk of meeting any liability then debts considered as bad and returned off now some specified in section 190 sub section 5 shall not be deducted that is income tax and super tax payable shall not be deducted then any compensation damages or payments made voluntarily then loss of capital nature including loss on sale of undertakings or any undertakings of a company then any change in the carrying amount of asset or liability recognized in the equity reserves including surplus in profit and loss account till now we have completed section related to appointment and remuneration now we shall look into section related to compensation section 202 contains the provisions related to compensation for loss of office of managing or whole time director or manager it states a company may make a payment to the 
मैनेजिंग डिरेक्टर और होल टाइम डिरेक्टर और मैनेजर बाय वे ऑफ कंपेंसेशन बट इन द फॉलोइंग केसेस द पेमेंट शेल नॉट बी मेड फॉर कंपेंसेशन दैट इज फर्स्ट इज वेर द डिरेक्टर रिजाइन फ्रॉम हिज ऑफिस एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ रिकन्स्ट्रक्शन और अमलगमेशन वेर इज रिजाइन from his office otherwise than reconstruction or amalgamation where the office of the director is vacated under section 167 where the company is wound up whether by order of tribunal or voluntarily and provided the winding up is due to the negligence or the default of director next where the director has been guilty of fraud or breach of trust or of gross negligence or gross mismanagement and the next is whether the director has instigated or has taken part directly or indirectly in bringing about the termination of his office then the compensation payable uh, to managing director or whole time director or manager shall not exceed the remuneration he would have earned if he would have been in the office for the remainder of his term or 3 years whichever is shorter next states that no such payment however can be made if the winding up of the company is commenced before or within 12 months after the date on which he ceased to hold the office and if the asset are not sufficient to repay the shareholders the next states that nothing in contained in this section shall prohibit the payment for any remuneration for the services rendered in any other capacity we have seen majorly when can a compensation not be given to the director we have seen six con six uh, conditions sorry six um, we have seen we have seen six cases where the compensation cannot be given then what is the maximum limit of compensation that can be given then when can a payment not be done and uh, what if the remuneration is given in the any other capacity so we have seen four important points in this section now we'll look into some other sections that is first is functions of company secretary it is given in section 205 functions are to report the board about the compliance with the provisions about the compliance with the applicable secretarial standards to provide the directors a guidance related regarding duties responsibilities and power then to facilitate the conveying of meetings and attend board meet committees and general meetings then obtain approvals from board general meeting or the government the next is to represent before the various regulators and other authorities the next is to assist the board in the conduct of affairs of the company the next is ensuring the good governance corporate governance practice then to discharge such, such other duties as may be specified the next section is uh, section 200 central government or the company to fix a limit with regards to remuneration in case of inadequate profit or no profits the government central government shall consider the following points while fixing the remuneration that is financial position of the company remuneration or commission in any other capacity Uh, which the director or individual uh, has drawn then remuneration or commission drawn by him from any other company this is any other capacity this is any other company then professional qualification and experience and also the government will consider such other matters which are prescribed in rule 6 they are financial and operating performance of the company in preceding 3 years then the relationship between remuneration and performance the next is principle of proportionality ideally by rating a uh, we'll see rating methodology which compares the remuneration of directors to that of the other directors on the board and employees or executives of the company then uh, whether remuneration policies for directors differs from that of other employees 
and the security is held by the directors including options and details of share pledged as at the end of the preceding financial year the next section we shall look into is section 201 forms of and procedure in relating to relation to certain applications that is when the company is not complying with the conditions given in schedule 5 then the company would apply to central government for the approval then it shall be given the application shall be made in the prescribed form accompanied by the fees then before any application is made or uh, to the central government under any of the sections of oside there shall be issued by or on behalf of general notice to the members that is general notice shall be given to the members and such notice shall be published at least uh, in one newspaper in principal language that is local language and other in english language that is in english newspaper circulating in that district then the copies of notice together with the certificate shall be attached to the application now rule 7 states that the companies other than listed companies and subsidiary of listed company may without the central government approval pay remuneration in case of no profit or inadequate profit beyond the ceiling limit provided that is subject to that this payment shall be approved by board resolution that is or uh, nrc under section 178 with clear reason and this justification for the payment that is board resolution or approval by nrc next is company has not made any default in repayment of its debt for the continuous period of 30 days next is uh, approval of shareholders by special resolution shall be obtained before payment for of remuneration for a period not exceeding 3 years then a statement along with the notice calling the general meeting shall be uh, given then the next is the company has filed balance sheet and annual return which are due to be filed with the register of company then every such application seeking approval shall be made to the central government within a period of 90 days from such appointment now we shall look into section 204 secretarial audit for bigger companies now which companies are required to conduct a secretarial audit is every listed company and every other class of company that is a comp every public company having a paid up share capital of 50 crores or more and every public company having a turnover of rupees 250 crores or more shall annexed with its board's report a secretarial audit report next is this audit report shall be in format uh, which which shall be given in form number mr3 now the duty is of the company in this case that is in case of secretarial audit is to give all the assistance and facilities to the company secretary in practice and the board of directors in their report shall explain in full any qualification or observation or remarks made by the company secretary in its report in case of contravention of section 204 then the company or every officer of the company or the company secretary in practice shall be punishable with the fine which shall not be less than rupees 1 lakh but may extend uh, to rupees 5 lakhs now we shall revise the last part of our chapter that is schedule 5 part 2 we have seen section 1 of part 2 we have seen section 2 of part 2 now we shall see section 3 that is remuneration payable by the companies having no profit or inadequate profit without central government approval in certain special circumstances that is in the following cases the remuneration pay a company can pay a remuneration even if they have no profit or inadequate profit and they will not be required approval of central government the the cases are that is 
uh, where the remuneration in excess of limit specified in section 1 or 2 is paid by any other company and this other company is foreign company or has got approval of its shareholders within the permissible can pay uh, within the permissible limits under section 197 the second is where the company is newly incorporated for a period of seven years next is a sick company for whom a scheme of revival or rehabilitation has been ordered and for a period of five years from the date of sanction of scheme of revival next is uh, in K in a company in relation to which a resolution plan has been approved by the NCLT under IBC 2016 for a period of five years, which may pay remuneration up to two times the amount permissible under section two. Next is where the remuneration of managerial person exceeds the limit, but is fixed by the board of industrial or financial reconstruction. Next is provided that the limits under this section shall be applicable subject to meeting of the conditions specified under section 2 and the following addition conditions. That is, this section states that this limits in section 3 shall be applicable only after meeting section specif uh, conditions specified in section 2 and this addition conditional condition specified in section three what are these additional conditions is that uh, except as provided in para a of this section managerial personnel is not receiving remuneration from any other company next is the auditor or company secretary or a secretary in whole time practice certifies that all secure creditors and term lenders have no obligation objections and the next is no default uh, on payments to creditor has been made then the next is a company in special economic zone has not raised any money by public issue of shares or debentures uh, and has not made any default in India in repayment of its debts for continuous period of 30 days may pay remuneration up to 2 crore 40 lakhs that is SEZ can pay a remuneration up to 2 crores 40 lakhs if they are, if they are not raised any money by public issue and not may and have not made any default in india for a continuous period of 30 days the next section uh, is section 4 that is a uh, perquisites not included in managerial remuneration that is following shall not be included in managerial remuneration they are contribution to provident fund superannuation fund or annuity fund to the extent this either singly or put together are not taxable under income tax act next is gratuity gratuity payable at a rate not exceeding half a month's salary for each completed years of service next is encashment of leave then in addition to the perquisites specified in para that is this three uh, these three perquisites and expatriate managerial personnel including a non-resident uh, shall be eligible to the following perquisites which shall not be included in the computation of ceiling on remuneration that is the expatriate managerial person person including non-resident shall be entitled to this additional compensation uh, which perquisites which are not included in the remuneration they are children's education allowance maximum of rupees 12,000 per month uh, per child or actual expenses whichever is less then such allowances is admissible up to maximum of two children next is holiday passage for children studying outside India or family staying abroad if, if the uh, if written holiday pass is once in a year by economic class or two once in two years by first class then next is leave travel concession now uh, we have seen that uh, it shall be part of if in section two we have seen that the effective capital is this much then we'll pay the remuneration this much like so what, how we'll calculate the effective capital 
it means paid up share capital excluding share application money or advances next is reserves and surplus excluding revaluation reserve then long term loans and deposits repayable after one year uh, excluding working capital loans over the old drafts interest due on loans unless funded bank guarantee etc and other short term arrangements then this shall be reduced by aggregate of any investment that is long term loans shall be reduced by aggregate of any investment except in case of uh, investment by investment company whose principal business is acquisition of shares stock ventures or other securities and accumulated losses and principal expenses not written off okay and the next is negative effective capital means effective capital calculated in accordance with the provisions contained in explanation 1 of this part is less than zero that is the effective capital is less than zero then it is stated as negative effective capital and the next is remuneration payable to managerial personnel in two companies in this case the total remuneration shall not exceed the higher maximum limit admissible from any one of the companies the next is provisions applicable to part 1 and part 2 of this schedule shall be that is the appointment and remuneration uh, referred to in part 1 and part 2 of this schedule shall be subject to approval by uh, resolution of the shareholders in general meeting that is a uh, resolution of shareholders next is the auditor or the secretary or the secretary in whole time practice shall certify that the requirements of the schedule have been complied with and such certificate shall be incorporated in the return filed with the registrar and the next is part 4 that is exemption by central government it state that the central government may exempt any class or classes of the companies from any of the requirements contained in this schedule here we have completed the revision of uh, our chapter and uh, in case you have any comments or if you have any doubts you can put them in the comment box below thank you for this revision video and thank you for staying with me during this video i have provided the link of the notes in the description below uh, so yeah thank you see you in the next video